regular computer parts are too expensive, so we're looking at another mini PC because they're not too expensive yet. Right now, I've got something I haven't tried before. It's from a company called uh, Chewy, and this is the AU Box, or maybe is it AU Box? No, it's got to be AU Box AI365, and that features the AMD Ryzen AI365 thing. Yes, I want to show you their website real quick because it's it's fun. It's the Ryzen AMD Ryzen AMD. It's the AMD Ryzen AI9 365. And it, uh, you can see the rest of the specs right there. But let me refresh the website here. Hold on, this is fun. Refresh the website. Yes, yeah, served up on a platter by a robot. Do you see that? Entry-level AI, exceptional performance. So entry-level AI, what does that mean? Well, for the 10 people out there running their own AI at home, you can have 73 tops of power. That's if you put together the CPU, GPU, and MPU. Just the MPU itself is 50 tops. I don't care about AI and I'm not sure when many PC companies are going to figure that out. I think it's kind of ruining the world. So whatever. I always use OEM keys. I grab them over at whokeys.com. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro. If you get a retail key, let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30 and a we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go. 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 11 Home. Windows 10 Home, and we have a couple different flavors of LTSC. 2021 gets updates until 2027, and the 2021 IoT edition gets updates until 2032. Also, if you're sick of paying that monthly fee for Office, you can get an offline version of Office. They've got 2019 and 2016. You know, 2016 will get most people by, in my opinion. You can also use the coupon code TS25 on these to save 25% on this as well. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. Let's just go through all the specs right now. I guess that's what we're doing. Let's go through what it is, and I'm going to talk about it like a regular mini PC, because even though AI marketing is really big and they do have like an AI processor, I think 90%, I would wager, 90% of the people are getting this and not using the AI processing uh, you know, capabilities. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments if there's something different. So you've got 10 cores, 20 threads with that AI9365. It's very similar to the 8945HS. This one's a little bit different because it's got some like efficiency cores, essentially. They're like, makes it lower power, but gives you more cores, which I'm fine with. Then we also have the AMD Radeon 880M, which is going to be really fast for gaming. 12 compute units there at 2900 megahertz. You got quad display support and 8K resolution support. We got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz and a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 uh, MBME M.2. As far as our connectivity goes, we got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the back. Got a couple of those, as a matter of fact. Comes with Windows 11 Pro, so that's how we're going to test it. Let's take a look at all the ports. So on the front, we've got a quote-unquote full-featured USB 4 that I'll also do video. And then we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A. Then we have 3.5 millimeter audio jack and a power button. Flipping it around to the back, there's our two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. We have another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A. And then we have DisplayPort, full-size DisplayPort's nice to see, 1.4. HDMI 2.1, then we have another full-featured USB 4. That'll do the display uh, port as well. And then there's your Kensington lock slot and uh, DC input. Kind of interesting, once you take off the, the bottom, there's a little, I don't know, sled or just extra area with some thumb screws, kind of. They're like, I don't know, I don't know what you call these things, but yeah, you can remove them with your thumb if you want to. And the fan is right there. So once you remove that, we can see under the hood there, we have um, some memory installed and it's branded TWSC. The M.2 is also branded TWSC and we'll test this out in just a second. So TWSC, that stands for Shenzhen TechWin Semi and they claim to have full stack capabilities. They say they can do chip design and firmware manufacturing model assembly. They don't explicitly say that this one was made in house, but they do claim that they can make all of it in house, the whole thing. So they are a company that can make ram that's not just the three big ones is this one made with micron i don't know is it made with samsung i would have to like call them and ask them like is this one made in the house so but it's it's very possible that this is completely made with their own stuff i think a lot of people overlook china china does have some fabrication facilities that can do ram and m.2 all right so that's the general unit overview 
Let's uh, take a look at some benchmarks and see how it does. In Valley, we got 70.3 and 37.1 is our minimum FPS overall score, 2941. Superposition taxes the GPU and the CPU. And here we're running it at 1080p medium. Our minimum, 33.72, never went below 30, that's nice. Average 40.75, and our results here. 5,448 is the overall score. All right, let's check out Cyberpunk. That was running on low, average 47.51, minimum 40.36. So I would probably play it this way. Low looks really good, but for the sake of testing, let's go back and try it on medium now. There we go, medium. Also want to note that uh, when you put it on this, it's just I'm just doing everything automatic. It's using AMD uh, FX Super Resolution 2.1. All right, medium. Looking pretty good here, 40.19, not that different than low. So you might want to run it this way. Never drop below 30 either. As you can see, the low is 34.58. Try it one last time on high. And on high, you don't want to play it this way. 30.82, minimum 25.42. So stick to medium or low. All right, we're going to try out Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm going to come over here. And we're just going to go straight to the medium profile. That's what I'm targeting here, I believe. I'm going to leave on FSR 2.2. All right, let's see how we're running right now. 40 FPS frame times are okay. All right, looks okay. Let's try it out. Now, if you're in the Underdark, it'll run just fine. If you go into a city or something, it should probably be okay, but you may want to turn it down a little bit because, you know, in the cities, it's going to, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, so it might drop below 30. If you're not really worried that much about it, then you don't have to because, you know, this is not a first-person shooter or whatever, so turn-based you don't have to worry about staying above 30 unless it's a motion sickness thing i don't know anyway let me get in there close it's running pretty good on medium we could try high couldn't we but i think uh medium is where i'm going to target this so let's see what we got here well you know what i'll try high as well why not we're on high we're now in the 30s so run around like this Feels kind of similar, but uh, we'll do a test on high as well and just see how it runs here in the Underdark. Mid-30s, you know what you could do is play it on high when you're down here and then crank it down to medium or low or just, I don't know, tune up a couple settings whenever you're in Baldur's Gate or any of the uh, bigger areas, crazier areas. A lot of the AAA games have not been so good lately, but luckily we've got a, a real 8-bit game here. Yeah, this is the Angry Video Game Nerd 8-bit. Let's go ahead and check it out here if you're crazy you can uh, you can turn the difficulty up but i don't think you need to all right we gotta skip past that all right so the deal here is that it's kind of like mega man uh what do we want to do let's do uh f14 tomcat the boss this is going to be a flying level each of the different levels um it's I mean, even though it's structured like mega man yeah so each of the levels has like a different theme there we go we got swords. What's this gun business over here? Kind of like the the devil one. That's where you get to fight Satan. Uh, but did I mention this game is a kind of a hard? Anyway, if you want to like a real eight bit game, it's hard to talk and play this at the same time, and and you want to get frustrated. Well, have I got the game for you? Anyway, yeah, this is something you can play on any of your mini PCs. You can play this on a Nintendo if they ever release the damn cartridge. Oh, I know you're ploy now. Like, these things, you son of a... All right, when it comes to Cinebench, it's a really fast CPU. Uh, the single core is great. So one of those beefy cores is giving us 1927 on the single core score. When you look at the multi-core, it's still faster than the old Threadripper stuff. And you can see there's where it stacks up with the new thread rippers and the Xeons and everything. So it's really fast because we got 10 cores, 20 threads. But again, a lot of those threads are kind of like efficiency cores or whatever. A lot of those cores are efficiency cores. Still, 18755 is really respectable. I, I respect it. Our Geekbench single core score is 2731 and the multi-core is 13770. Let me scroll down here so you can see all the individual test scores. Especially Kling, that's very important. And if you need anything, just pause over here. This is our OpenCL score, 31580. 
And again, there's the individual tests. Let's have a look at the hard drive speed. So I'd say this is somewhere in the middle. It's like an average speed hard drive. Nothing too crazy. The random 4Ks are nothing crazy either. Um, it didn't even get warm enough to, to mention, like talking like it went up like four or five degrees over the ambient. So yeah, it's really, really well done when it comes to the cooling, but a lot of that's because the fan's really powerful. It's got a heat sink and it's not extremely fast. 4850 on the read and 4391 on the right. I mean, it's fast, just not 7,000 fast. When it comes to the IOPS, okay, the random 4Ks actually look pretty good here. So it's gonna feel nice and snappy. 149,862 on the read and 110,005 on the right. Start with the heat and the temperatures. Ooh, where'd it go? No! <laughs> I think I've overreacted. I think I've lost I've lost it forever. Whatever. We're, there it is. I swear to God. All right. There we go. This has been running for a long time. I've got stuff. I've got a lot of stuff to do. So, well, who cares? It's 100%. And as you can see, our temperatures never got above 85.8, which is just fine. It's running. It's been running about like that the entire time. So, uh, this is better performance than, than most, especially for a powerful CPU like this. But let's see how loud it is. In the room now, it's about 42, 43 decibels. I'll put it next to the machine. Use the desk, I'm doing stuff. Uh, it gets a little loud. It sounds like a tiny uh, Boeing 777 just going crazy. It's got a, that high-pitched, almost airplane sound going on. It's moving a lot of air. I can feel the air hitting my leg. It's actually annoying. It's like warming my leg up because I've got the fan pointed right at me. So just note that wherever you have this, it's going to generate almost enough air to lift off. And it sounds like it's about to lift off. So it's a uh, loud and, you know, but hey, it's not that warm. So maybe we can turn down the fans a little bit. Seeing as how I just put together a video about the best mini PCs of the year, I did throw this into the test results and you can see it uh, right about here. So it's Similar in performance to the Ryzen 9 8945HS in most tests. This is Valley. Let's skip through. Take a look at it. does pretty well in superposition. So it trails a little bit behind the Ryzen 9s right here in Cyberpunk. Now when we get over to Cinebench, it's looking really good. So take a look at that. So the C if you're really, really interested in um, CPU scores, it is a little bit faster than the last generation Ryzen 9s. So there we go, the Geekbench single and multi-core scores looking pretty good right here. The hard drive they put in there, it's not quite as fast as the others. As you can see here with our, you know, read and write, still gonna feel decently snappy, but you know. And then this is where it like really, really is good. The temperature under load was excellent. The fans were really, really loud. That's probably why. At this price point, if it's not on sale, it's not competitive. It's what happens when you start aggregating all your data and looking at it. It's like, yes, this one's really good with CPU, really good with cooling. It's loud. And at this price, not competitive. What do they have it priced at right now? Let's they have it on their website. I don't know. They got all kinds of deals going on on their website. So yeah, maybe you can get it uh, for a deal here. Where is it? 519 for an 8745 HS. That's pretty good. So it's not even on here yet. So yeah, brand new unit. So there you have it. I think it's um, a good mini PC. Um, I'm not really convinced that I would get this over the Ryzen 9 8945HS because the price point, unless it comes down quite a bit, CPU is a little stronger, and then we're gonna need to adjust the fan curve a little bit. But um, it's a solid unit, it's well made. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.